Hey everybody and welcome to the show. Have you ever heard a band that just seems to connect with you and you can't really pinpoint the reason? You just hear them and say, yes! One of those bands for me is Medicine Boy. They hail from Cape Town, South Africa originally, although they now live in Berlin. Andre Leo joins me and he talks about the sounds and the feelings of Medicine Boy. Music isn't technically complex, it's emotive, it's atmospheric, it's delicate, it's bombastic, sometimes in the same song. Check them out on Bandcamp or on social media, at Medicine Boy. Check us out at Performance ANX. Subscribe, rate, review, share, and enjoy Andre Leo of Medicine Boy on Performance Anxiety. Hi, everybody. This is uh, Andre Leo. I'm one half of Medicine Boy. Um, and you're listening to Performance Anxiety. me yes yeah i hope they i hope they i hope the connections are like like uh got some uh power issues here in cape town oh no it's it seems to be working okay it's causing the, the internet i think oh, we, we just have a little bit of a lag so let me just put it a bit louder okay so we'll just uh take take it slow i guess yeah exactly <laughs> well thank you so much for joining me man i really appreciate it <laughs> yeah thank you very much for inviting me man i'm it's absolutely my pleasure um the first thing I want to say is that uh, I'm really I'm, I'm kind of angry with myself because I just discovered you guys through our friend Paula, and I, I'm, I'm absolutely fallen in love with the music. It is just the most amazing stuff that I've heard in a long time. Well, thank you very much, man. That's uh, that's really kind of you to say. And uh, Paula is just uh, yeah, she's the best. Oh, she and, uh, she's uh, too kind, too kind to us. She's yeah, she's amazing. She's uh, I, I met her actually. I did a show with Leah from Black Rebel Motorcycle Club, and uh, Paula just kind of reached out and said, "Hey, I, I thought it was a really great episode. You know, I'll, do you mind if I post it somewhere?" And I said, "Yeah, sure, no problem." And I didn't even realize she was connected at the time, so we just started talking, and and uh, then I, I kind of realized what she was doing, and I said, "Okay, hey, let's. If you got anybody else that you might." Do you think it might be good for the show? Let me know. And she's like, you got to talk to Medicine Boy. I'm like, oh, yeah, okay. Oh, that's cool, man. <laughs> so I went out and started listening to the music, and I was just blown away. So I, I'm just getting familiar with the with the catalog and the music, and it's it's it, you guys have kind of become one of my favorite bands. I mean, not just of the year, but like one of my favorite bands. Well, that's, yeah, that's just amazing to hear. Dude. It's always, I mean, it's always, I was speaking to someone about, about it uh, yesterday, but just the, the fact that anyone listens to, you know, to one stuff is kind of a, it's kind of incredible, you know, like everyone's out there doing their own thing. And the, the fact that some people take some time to, from their own lives to listen to what you're doing is a, uh, it's kind of amazing, you know? So I, you. yeah, I mean, I, I get it on a smaller sense with this podcast cause I don't have nearly the audience you guys do. But I, I can understand it because it's, you know, it's personal to you. And, and then you, you don't know how many people are interested in the first place. So it's, it's, it's exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Now I want to know a little bit more about how you got into music in the first place. Um, did you grow up in a musical family and how old were you when you started playing music? What was your first instrument? Yeah. Well, I actually, um, growing up, my, uh, my dad was very into he was very into music. He was very into folk music, stuff like uh, Joni Mitchell and John Martin. And, um, oh, and I grew up, uh, I, I grew up skateboarding. I started skateboarding when I was nine. So I kind of heard stuff like, uh, you know, the Ramones and, um, things like this and skate videos, you know, Johnny Thunders, but it never really, I mean, I always liked it, you know, but I was, uh, but it, music never really hit me 
when I in those years, like, um, and then when I was when I was twelve um, for Christmas, my my dad actually went out and he bought me a which is which is really strange because he's not necessarily a, a big fan of this band, but he he went out and bought me a, um, a, a Rolling Stones album. It was the Forty Licks album that came out at the time, the Forty, oh, okay. 40 Year Anniversary thing. Um, and he just bought me this this CD, this double CD, this sort of retrospective, and he just said, you know, he uh, he thought he that I would really like this and uh it literally just uh it literally changed my changed my life it was like everything my life was sort of before i heard the stones and after i heard the stones and uh, that was wow. that was kind of it for me so i actually do have one of the one of those real <laughs> real stories you know that uh and then so this was in my like formative uh yeah like i said i was 12 so i was just coming into my teenage years and like i i used to uh used to get an allowance every month. And then I would go out with my dad. He would take me to this uh, big music store and I would buy two new stones albums. You know, luckily there was oh, wow. a very big catalog for me to dig. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah. so I, so I kind of went through the, through about a year or, or two of basically just listening to the stones. And then also it was kind of into the doors. And, and I think I was kind of of this uh, school of thought that like only old music was good, you know, just probably pretty pretentious little kid. And then yeah, um, I went through that too. And then, then I heard bands like, uh, <laughs> then I, then I heard bands like, uh, the white stripes and the BRMC. And that was, that was a real, uh, that was a, a major thing for me to think like, Oh, oh my God, like these bands are creating this stuff now, you know, they're taking, yeah. taking all this kind of root stuff. Cause at, at the moment I, at that time I was also very, very into blues music and I'm just going through the stones or whatever, digging back. Um, so then when I got into those bands, it really, um, had a big influence on me starting to play music, you know, um, okay. to, to how to do, how to take these kind of, I guess, roots influences and, uh, and put like, put your own kind of twist on it, I guess, you know? Okay. So me and a couple of friends, we started our first band when we were in, we were in high school. I think I was about 15 I think we were all about 15, 16 and we played for a couple of years and, uh, had a lot of fun. And, um, we, I think we always kind of saw ourselves as like, a the, maybe this is also just like kind of some kind of pretense to it, but we saw ourselves as, I think a bit like, of like outcasts from the rest of the bands. You know, we always like a lot of people were sort of doing very sort of modern kind of, uh, you know, pop punk, hardcore kind of, kind of stuff, yeah. teenage stuff. And we were sort of this flag bear flag bearers of, uh, good music, I guess is what we <laughs> thought we were doing. Um, you know. um, and then that band, uh, that band as everyone sort of got out of high school, went on and then uh, went to university. And, and as people sort of started you know, graduating and moving on in the world and, you know, getting, getting full-time jobs and whatever, it kind of reached a point where, where it was obviously, it was kind of causing a lot of friction with us because, you know, some, some of us wanted to continue doing it. Some of some just couldn't. And then we just decided actually like, we kind of started this band as friends and we, you know, now we're kind of, we're fucking it up now by, by, by butting heads. So we just kind of yeah. left it, um, called it quits. And then, so this was at the time when I was, I was around 20. And then, uh, so I was sort of at a bit of a crossroads in terms of what do I do? You know, I'm, I didn't, I never studied or anything. So I kind of thought, well, I'm 20. I'm not, you know, it's still time to do things like this. Um, do I, do I want to go study something? You know, do I want to study maybe literature or something? Do I continue playing music? Can, do I do something else totally? Uh, right. And then actually we were speaking earlier about, um, black rebel motorcycle club. They, they then actually came to South Africa when I was 21 and, uh, I took, uh, took two rounds of mushrooms and saw them and it was, <laughs> that was basically the, the that was basically the deal signed for me you wow. know, from, from there. I was like, Oh, well, I'm, that's, that's it for me. Right. You know, like I'm, I'm in it now until, until the end. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I got to put like, I just have to figure out and I'm still, and I'm still figuring out, you know, I just remember seeing it and thinking I want a part of that somehow, you know, yeah. and I don't know what it is and I'm not sure how to get there, but I'm going to, I'm going to try and let's see. Um, so that was, yeah, that was, that was, up to that, you know, that was a very formative, uh, musical experiences for me, you know, between the age of 12 and 21. Yeah. So, and, so and I'm 29 now. Your two big influences there are the Stones and Black Rubber Motorcycle Club. So that's pretty damn solid. 
Yeah, I would say, you know, if you had to, um, if you had to put it on. And, and then also, I mean, I, I was hugely in, in that time also and, and since been um, people like Nick, Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds have been a big one for me and um, Tom Waits and oh, um, yeah. things like this, you know. Well, yeah. I mean, and, you know, I can hear definitely some of that in, in especially Tom Waits lyrically because the lyrics of, of Medicine Boy are really stories and it's not nothing seems frivolous or you know throw this is this is just going to be some throwaway lyrics you know everything seems to be incredibly well thought out yeah i I would i mean i would say that uh yeah tom waits as a lyricist kind of kind of blew my mind you know when i first heard it i couldn't sort of believe the the sort of trans like the transportive like element that that you could uh you know how he could get transported listening to to what he's saying to you, you know, like, and, um, and I just thought that with songwriting, you sort of have the opportunity to, to do anything and you can say anything and you can sort of, you can, you can make things up and you can, you can put stuff together that's not supposed to be together and sort of, and see what comes out the other end and you can do it because it's your, it's your song, you know? Right. Um, Yeah, exactly. uh, So I was, it's kind of like a, I guess it's a very, it's a very thrilling, um, it's a very thrilling approach to songwriting, which I think, you know, a lot of songwriters, which are also really great, are all, all, all very, it's all very autobiographical and it's very, uh, it has to, you know, come from a, from a very personal space and an, an experience. And, and while I do obviously pull from these places as well, I kind of like to, uh, I kind of like to mix it up with, um, with whatever I can sort of pull out of the air or what feels right, you know, and not, not just, uh, spew my emotions onto people i guess <laughs> if that makes sense yeah yeah all right so my next question is what are you drinking right now because i'm drinking a uh it's a beer from here from south africa called devil's peak Ooh. um devil's peak yeah devil's peak is a mountain which is just behind me um and yeah they make pretty they make pretty good beer i had a um i because i'm down here now i live in berlin so but i'm down here for this uh this festival that i that i run in cape town and then um, I'm staying here for the holidays doing some, we're mixing this new medicine boy record. So I saw, uh, saw some family today, drank some beers and then took this one home. So that's pretty good. <laughs> All right. Well, I've got, I'm going to join you a little bit. I've got my coffee cause it's a little early here, but I, I threw in a, a dash of Buffalo. It's a Buffalo trace distillery here. And I guess somewhere in, in the U S I don't know where the hell is, but they make amazing bourbon and it's their, their version of like a Bailey's It's a bourbon cream. So I just put a, well, great. Well, cheers. Cheers. So, how did you meet up with Lucy? So, um, Lucy, Lucy was studying. Um, she was studying at a, at a. She was studying arts at, in, at a university in a place called Grahamstown. She was doing her. I think she was doing her masters or something in choreography. Um, and she, when she finished, she moved down to Cape Town to uh, pursue a career in music. And we, we had a, a very um, strong mutual connection um, in a fellow musician friend of ours, a very good friend. And we kind of all met and became, we became super good friends. And uh, we started kind of all playing together and we s- sort of, I would play with her and her solo stuff. And uh, then we kind of formed this very a band with, with five of us and we would always, pl- and we play together and uh, it, me and Lucy ended up uh, becoming you know, really, really good friends and, um, eventually ended up becoming, um, you know, pa- partners in a sort mm-hmm. of a couple sense of the word. Okay. Uh, and then, and then one day we, um, we thought, you know, like what, how we really wanted to be, um, we wanted to travel essentially, you know, we wanted to take our music around the world and it's a very difficult thing to do in South Africa. You know, it's far away from everything. The, the sort of visa implications are hellish, but we thought, you know, if we, if we can figure out some way to do something with just the two of us, you know, we can travel together, we can, you know, um, share things, whatever. It just made sense to us. We thought, okay, let's try, let's see if we can, you know, and we were kind of, uh, spending all our time together anyway. And we thought how let's, let's take this on. How are we going to make this work with two people? And we, uh, we didn't really know. And we just kind of tossed some ideas around. We wrote some songs, um, and then eventually it led to the thing. Sort of okay, well, I'm going to play guitar. You play you play drums, like sort of kind of Jesus and Mary Chain kind of stand up drum thing. Right, um, right, yeah. And then 
kind of started from there. It, yeah, kind of started from there, and then we said, well, she has this very beautiful organ, and we kind of let's let's incorporate that. And, and thought, okay, well, maybe we get a maybe we get a drum machine and try figure it out. And so that's kind of the the that was the sort of first formation of of Medicine Boy was was me and Lucy and a drum machine that we really had no idea how to use. It was like, I mean, it was just very much like, it was very much just like, uh, uh, an exercise in, in luck and I guess and throwing <laughs> caution out the window. Um, It felt uh, it, it it felt extremely good to us because it, 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 it felt we really had to work and we were very um, you know we were very aware of what we were doing in those in those in that first period because it it felt so new and it felt so daunting just to be two people and um, trying to do this thing and not really you're not really sure where it's going or if it's if it is even working but it it, it felt so right and it felt so alive and um something i mean we were very lucky that it sort of connected with uh, people in quite a strong way here in cape town pretty quickly um and okay. the fact that we were just two people made um meant that we could travel to other places of south africa you know and uh, go play for different crowds there and um yeah that so that was kind of our um how me and Lucy sort of came, came to work together, you know, and at all at the same time, I was, uh, she's got a solo career and I was playing guitar and that, you know, so we, we kind of, uh, we keep, we keep kept pretty busy. How is the scene in South Africa? Because your music is, is it's definitely got a darkness to it. Almost like a menacing quality about it. And is the sound or is the, uh, the, the scene in South Africa open to a, a wide variety of different types of music or is it very open? So South Africa has actually got a, um, you know, I mean, I'm maybe I'm a bit biased about Cape Town, but particularly Cape Town has an, an incredible, um, music scene, especially when it comes to, uh, I guess, strange types of rock and roll music. You know, um, there's a, I do a, um, I'm part of a collective called psych night and we've sort of been doing events here in South Africa since 2013 with a uh, band like night beats and the Alalas and okay. um, we have the OCs and things like this. Um, so I've kind of been, you know, I've been around the local scene in Cape town for, for years. And every time I come back, I'm just sort of more blown away by how good the bands are and how interesting they are and how and the biggest thing is also how much they support each other. I mean, actually go after we do this interview, going to go watch some, uh, one, a local label here is having their sort of end of year gig with three of the three of the Cape Town bands, you know, and uh, oh, cool. so everyone is everyone's really supportive of each other and and loves each other, and they all play and everyone plays together. And uh, but you know the um, the scene here, this, I found like scenes all over the world really like you know it's the same. Everyone faces the same problems, you know, in, in terms of venues closing down and you know um, musicians right. not getting enough money and all that, you know, but uh, but. But yeah, Cape Town, the this, this scene is incredible. A lot of diverse types of rock and roll music as well, which is great. Yeah. So the bands are pretty supportive of each other, unlike things like, because I hear a lot of stories. Uh, I've had some people who went through this, the 70s punk scene in New York. It was very um, competitive, where bands were actually sabotaging each other on stage, you know, because they wanted to, you know, they knew that some record guy was coming to CBGB's, to play so they would just kind of mess around with the sound a little bit so that they sounded better than the other band and so it's it sounds like it's a lot more uh, supportive yeah i mean that's so like that's so, that, that's so ridiculous to me yeah. now I, i'm always kind of i'm I, i'm always kind of sh shocked actually like um it's i was actually in a situation recently that um i won't go into but basically this there was a musician who i who i um thought I was very close to and had, was, um, had always shown a lot of support to. And, um, and I thought we had a very good kind of camaraderie kind of thing. But anyway, the situation turned out that it was, it became this really ugly thing basically because of, a some weird 
competitiveness that I think was in this other person that, and I was, and I, it had just totally baffled me because I've never, I've never ever, we, we get into this kind of music thing to avoid all that bullshit, you know, like, right. like you know, this climbing the ladder and, and all that stuff. Like we, we, and everyone is, everyone is uh, trying their best to, to, to do their best. And it's such a difficult thing that I think if you start, you know, um, becoming mean, mean spirited and envious and of, of people around you, then, then you're, you're just an asshole and you're in, in the wrong industry. Yeah. Um, I think. And you're being incredibly short sighted the, too. The, the support. Absolutely. The support, um, support amongst musicians is its own currency. You know, it really means like, it means a lot if, um, if you, if you're playing a show and you see other musicians there, you know, and if they, I mean, you know, because hopefully there is mutual respect, you know, right. um, and often an admiration. I mean, I mean, I'm sometimes so, uh, like just baffled by the amount of amazing musicians and people that are around me at, at, at all times. You know, I feel very, very lucky that my life has sort of worked out that way. You know, <laughs> sort of you check yourself sometimes and you're, and you're sitting in a room and it's just like these incredible people who are just making this bizarre stuff in a, in a world that is often, uh, you know, not great. The sound of medicine boy. It's very, Spooky, almost. I'm trying to think of a good word to describe it for anybody who hasn't heard it, but it's it's really hard to describe. When you say you're, it's a duo. Most people think you know white stripes, black keys, uh, something straightforward rock, or maybe something folky. But it's not at mm. all. It's 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 cinematic almost in the fact it's very moody and ambient and it's it, it sets it sets a mood really it's 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 very hard to describe yeah. it was that was it intentional to steer away from being a, a band similar to the white stripes or the black keys where you're straight ahead bluesy rock um i think there was i mean there were always sort of comparisons i guess to say like band like the kills because you know also a drum machine thing and whatever but right. i don't uh first of all first of all i def- definitely don't have the, the the chops to be jamie hints but <laughs> but i i think our, our our you're quite right with about the mood thing because we from the start we kind of wanted to make um, mood music really we wanted to create an, an atmosphere and a mama take your pill is all that they say Switch them up If you don't like them that way A little pick me up At the end of the day A little fixer up To keep the demons at bay And a, fe- a feeling really, you know, we're, um, rather than you know, create a hit or create a, um, a just a, a rock and roll song or something. So I think right. the, and I think as, we, as we were learning to create songs with just the two of us, um, I guess we kind of found our way, um, found our own voicings through just learning, you know, and through playing together and whatever. And then I think I developed my, my guitar style rapidly in those early, early years of medicine boy, because I'd always been, in other bands, I'd always been with another guitar player, you know, and I was sort of singing and just playing chords and, um, uh-huh. and I really had to, uh, I really had to develop it and, and I could really find out what I, what kind of stuff I really liked and what, 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 um, what tonalities and stuff I really liked. And often it was very, um, sort of droney, open tuning, spooky, um, cinematic type stuff, you know? Yeah. Um, and then, and me, me and Lucy, you know, and she, she we, our, our tastes are very similar um, in that regard. You know, we've always also liked, uh, you know, soundtrack music and, and things like this. So, yeah, um, it was a, a key player from the beginning, I think, you know, um, in that, yeah, to create a, to, to for 45 minutes or whatever you are on stage, create a bit of a, a world, you know, of your, of your own. Um, right. And a bit of, it's a bit of escape, escape, escapism, I guess, you know. Well, that's that's what some of the, the best music is. You know, it takes you out of the 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 shit you're in, you know, day to day, and it puts you in a in a hopefully a better place. Absolutely. Or and and if you're if you're really lucky, it can help you 
make sense of the day-to-day shit you know yeah at least for at least for, at least for a little while even just for a day you know that's that's that can that can be major hell sometimes i'll take it for the 45 minutes that you guys are on stage yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um okay so speaking of your guitar work you mentioned that you and you mentioned that you're you know you're not like a you're not a speed metal guy you're not a, a super hyper technical player you use a lot of uh reverb and and feedback and and i absolutely love that sound it's is that was that a something that you that you're inspired by with by another artist is it something that you heard like that sounds amazing or is it just a a way to to color the music especially since you two are just a duo you know i think that um so there's been a so like i said when i was uh when i was a teenager i was very into blues music and my my main my main guy was always john lee hooker and the, the, this whole kind of how he would just kind of stay on one chord he would not really change you know that right. that always kind of uh, that really always just was an amazing thing to me and a lot of the stuff i've written then and now is always kind of also focused on this one kind of repetitive note you know so okay. um that that's an that's an influence i've actually always told you know, in my mind, Medicine Boy is very much a blues band, you know, even if I'm the only one that thinks that, I don't, <laughs> I don't know, but I, I see it. Um, and then the, um, the other, you know, major influence was, was Peter Hayes, um, from the RMC. The, um, I've sort of never, I've never heard gu- guitar sound like that, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously I loved the albums and stuff before, but, but, but seeing it for the first time live is really a, it was a, I just couldn't, like I said, I just didn't know what was going on. You know, I couldn't figure out how was this happening, you know, and I must have, I must have spent hours on on YouTube just trying to, just seeing this man, like, how is, how is he, how is he doing it and trying to Google his tunings and all this and that. And then when when I, when I, when I sort of came across all these, all these tunings that interesting people were using, it it was so daunting to me. I thought, oh my God, like, I'm I'm fucked. Like, how how am I (laughs) ever going to, you know, but actually then, you know, a couple of years down the line, I, f- I found just from playing and experimenting, I am now also just in this, in this, in this, uh, in this boat where I just utilize a lot of open tunings and it, and it happens very naturally. And, uh, often I just sort of tune until it, until it feels right. And always just trying to look for something that's, that's slightly different that I didn't feel that's been done before. And, um, so uh, oh, another another really big one for me was uh, seeing Place of Very Strangers in 2013. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, that was, I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna get into the the feedback thing, that's a pretty good. Uh, be- <laughs> yeah. That's a pretty good benchmark. Oh so, yeah, for sure. Those guys uh, are noisy. Yeah. In a yeah, good way. So, so I think yeah. So I think those um, like sort of the sort of the very kind of primal. Um, repetitive droney nature of Johnny Hooker's kind of blues style, the kind of, um, very, you know, lush and open and, and just like mind bending things that Peter Hayes does. And then the sort of aggression and like flame throwing nature of what bands like place of Very strangers or the Jesus and Mary chain do. I would say that those are all very key influences on me. Um, I've, uh, I've never really, uh, I've never really sort of been into the shoegaze thing as per such because I, I, I don't, I, I don't, I don't like it's hard to sound too pretty. You know, I always wanted to sound a little bit, like a little okay. bit animalistic. So you're not really into the jangly um, sound. I don't, I don't even know what I'm into. You know, I just, uh, <laughs> I just, I just, I just do it until it, until it, until it sounds, until it sounds right to me, you know? And then I, I just kind of, take it from there i guess i'm very much still just figuring things out as i go along to be honest well it's it's great the uh that you mentioned the the, the open tunings all because i you can hear that the, the songs have this amazing space to it they're able to breathe and 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 have a life of their own because of i, I think in my opinion because of the use of your feedback and the open tunings and and your willingness not to just cram everything with notes you know, the music is, can be sure, I, slow and open. I think, yeah, I think also my thing with, with that I like about open tunings is, uh, is that it sort of makes you, it, it, everything you might have learned from by playing guitar, you kind of, 
you you unlearn by playing, especially if it's like not your standard open tuning, because you kind of you don't really know what you're doing, um, and you don't know the shapes often, you know, of what. So it's it's more it's more instinctive, um, and uh, I mean, often it's a bit more of a struggle, but because you know, but you are essentially. A, uh, for me, I feel like I'm. Uh, it's also a lot of fun to play alone on, on open tunings because you have this amazing sort of droning thing going on, you know. So it's a. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh yeah, I don't know. It's just kind of um, actually like I'm. I'm always quite uh, quite shocked by my, my by my lack of knowledge of <laughs> of just actual normal guitar tuning. You know, it's always <laughs> it's always. <laughs> I, I like it because you get unique sounds when you get when you use an open tuning. It doesn't sound like standard tuning. You know, a lot of things can get yeah. predictable, and it, it, Medicine Boy is nothing nothing about you guys is predictable. So it's well, thank you. That's a that's a that's a big compliment. Thank you very much. Well, it's and oh, I got to tell you that before I know we're we're gonna get into this in, in a couple of minutes here. I've been playing the music over the past couple of weeks that I've discovered you guys from my my wife and my kids, and they absolutely adore you guys too. And uh, I, I know this you, you guys are working on a new LP, and it's the last Medicine Boy LP. My daughter says you guys aren't allowed to do that. So, <laughs> yeah, she's 14 yeah. and she says, I have to convince you guys that you have to make more music together. So, oh, uh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, she, she, she might be right, but, but, uh, I guess if she's 14, she's gonna, she's gonna start learning pretty fast that a lot of things yeah. in the world happen that you don't want to happen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, it, but that is, that is very sweet. I wanted to throw that out because I promised her I'd tell you guys that. So, but I do want to go back to your guitar a little bit more. What kind of effects do you mm. use? Because you, you get this incredible wall of sound in the studio and live. So what, is there anything that's not like top secret that you can let me know you're using? I don't have a, um, like a, I think I also feel the same way about this as I do about the, the you know, supporting each other. I, I've not, I don't have any sort of secrets tricks or things that I don't want to tell anybody or anything. Um, my, my sort of the, the pedal, my, my, my gear, I guess, has sort of just grown a bit over the years quite naturally. You know, um, I, at the moment, at the moment I use, I use two guitars. I use a jazz master and a, um, a very nice company out of, uh, out of Miami called pure Salem. Um, they make great guitars. So I use one of their guitars. Is that that white um, one that I've seen in the videos? Yeah. That's it, it, gorgeous. Exactly, yeah. It's that one. Love yeah, it's that. a beautiful guitar. And um, so I use those and I use, and then mainly I use a twin reverb as the amp. Um, and then I have, basically my pedals are just a combination of quite a lot of fuzz pedals. I have a, I have two pedals from a, um, a very, like one of my favorite companies from Denmark called, a, I think it's pronounced Ruse. It's R E R E A U S S or something like this. Okay. Um, they made this, uh, I actually got turned on to them because they made a, a signature uh, Warren Ellis pedal from the like modeled after his his sort of fuzz sound and uh, grinder man and bad seeds and stuff. And uh, oh, cool. he's if I actually if I actually had to pick one sort of get one major influence on my guitar playing, it would actually be Warren Ellis, even though he doesn't play guitar. Um, <laughs> anyway, so, so I got turned. On, I got turned onto this company, and then turns out they also made a Roland Howard pedal, who's also a big hero of mine. Um, okay. So I got so I got those two pedals, which are basically just uh, you know really great, disgusting sounding things. Um, <laughs> then I got another, and then I got another. Oh, one of my favorite fuzzes is from a company called Basic Audio um, out of the states. Um, and then then I actually just have a bunch of very standard, um, I have like a Memory Boy delay pedal kind of a cheap tremolo pedal. Um, I mainly use the amps reverb actually. Um, oh, okay. and oh, I have a, a loop, oh, I have a looper, um, the ditto, the ditto, the ditto two, and then the a jam man that I kind of have, um, some stuff just sort of saved on, you know, for like between, between songs or whatever, just some, uh, soundscape stuff that I've made. It's kind of a nice to have it at the end of the board because sometimes I'll be, messing around and making loops and making textures and I go, Oh, that's really nice. And I can just save it on there, you know, oh, and I cool. can sort of, and then sometimes in the middle of the song, it, I can think, Oh, you know, actually I'll just throw this in here now, you know, it's in the right key or something. So it keeps it kind of nice and spontaneous, which I like. Oh, that's cool. Um, and then a really big, 
and a pedal that's that's been that's been quite a, a game changer for me, especially just being a. Um, I mean, I talk about us as a duo, but for I mean, for most of the time we've been playing with a drummer. Um, you know, there's just that that first that first while that we were just doing the drum machine thing. Right. But um, so a pedal that's really helped me to fill out the sound is uh, the Freeze pedal, um, the Electro Harmonics. So it's basically a basically a, dr- a drone pedal. You know, you play a you play a note or a chord and you hit, and you hit it and it'll just latch that note and it'll kind of wobble it. And it kind of gives it this, uh, yeah, just a kind of like a droney effect. Oh, and cool. Can, and, that can, and, that, and that can sit underneath what you're doing. And like I said, a lot of my stuff is essentially just one chord. So it can kind of, it kind of works a lot. And I actually, where I think a lot of people put that pedal sort of towards the end of their chain, I put it almost right at the beginning. So every, every other pedal I, I hit, the drone gets affected by it, you know. So if I hit the fuzz, then this drone is also getting affected. So it, oh, cool. it's been a, it's been a, it's been a nice little uh, trick and source of inspiration for me. But I'm kind of also at this point now where I'm, you know, I've been kind of using the same pedals for a long time, and you know, you start to get to your, uh, you start to go back to old tricks or whatever. So I'm sort of in the, in the, in the um, search for something new and inspiring. I'm not sure what that'll be, you know. But I guess, I guess guitar players are always always in the search for a new pedal I've learned. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you something that I saw uh, oh, years ago, and, and it's, they still work making pedals. So, uh, Zvex, and they make this... Oh, yeah? They, yeah, they make this really weird pedal. I don't even know how to describe it. You just have to look it up. It's called The Machine. And it's it cuts through... It's a dis, it's like a distortion, but it kind of... The the wavelength is, is slightly different. And instead of... I, they explain it on the, some YouTube video, and you know, I they show you this shit on an oscilloscope, and all, and they go, oh, "This is what it does," and it cuts through the other distortion, and it. All I know is it sounds crazy. It's just it it sounds like you, you're hearing a guy play this the distorted riff, the distorted uh, chord, and then he hits the machine pedal, and it's like a buzz saw right through the rest of the distortion. It's just crazy. Oh, yeah. yeah, check oh, it. I gotta check that out for sure. Maybe maybe that's the one. Maybe it, yeah, Zvex. I think Z V E X, and it's called the Machine. It they make a okay. lot of weird pedals, but they're one of those uh, boutique guys that just makes off the wall shit. That just they make. They have one uh, that it, it sounds like an old answering machine. It, it, it's just you play your guitar. Oh, yeah. it's, it sounds like an old old phone ringing or something. I don't know why you use half this stuff or how, who would use that, but some dude thought it would be great and made it, but sure. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you, after being in, in South Africa for years, you guys decided to move to Berlin. What was the reason for the move? Well, so we, we, we did our first uh, European tour kind of soon after we started. I mean, almost like within a year, we, we, we hit it, extremely um diy kind of cowboy style and uh, <laughs> it was it was kind of a it was kind of like in a weird way of because we, we went over for about three months and a big part of the trip was actually we got to see a lot see a lot of bands that we that we've never seen that were um you know so influential to us and uh which obviously being from south africa you don't always get to see the bands that you want to um, yeah i can imagine so, so we so we went over and um and so, you know, we saw the Mary Chain twice and Patti Smith t- three times, spiritualized and bad oh, seeds and whatever. So a lot of that, so, and, I mean, that was just as inspiring as actually playing overseas, you know? So as, anyway, we did that and then, but it was, yeah, it was real DIY. It was some, some, some real tough moments with that one. Um, <laughs> Well, do you, in, in that situation, do you guys, obviously, you, you know, you, you arrange and schedule everything yourself. Are you just emailing clubs or are you trying to, to latch onto a, a band that's playing there so that you, you kind of maybe have an in or is it just we're going to go there? Uh, you know, we've got like a Tuesday in Hamburg, you know, uh, a Thursday in Bremen. You know, how, how are you guys scheduling all of this? Like the first one was very much, we, I mean, we must send about out about a thousand emails, not even really like, you know, not knowing how it works, the kind of what the, what the process is with, you know, booking agents and venues and promoters and support shows. We, you know, we had no idea. So we just mailed a shit ton of people, got almost no replies, but you know, um, then, you know, then we, we made friends with a very, um, people who were very close to still, um, 
this band from from France who called Hoboken Division, and they, we kind of did a couple of shows with them in France, and um, some people that we met also in Toulouse who do sort of a, also kind of a psychedelic nights or whatever. So okay. there were a couple of people who were really good to us, and we kind of just tried to fill the gaps, um, you know, as best we could. Um, okay. And we also had a, the people from Bad Vibrations in London were very nice to us too, and we went and played there. Um, and but yeah, as soon as we got back, we thought, okay, we have to go again. Um, but we have to do this, uh, better and more sort of streamlined, you know, probably don't have to go for three months, do it more, um, concise. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and then, so then we just basically got right back to it. We, we mailed the people, the people that we worked with in this one. And then obviously in doing so you meet new people and people start to kind of, I guess, hear a bit more about you in a very you know, in a small way. And, uh, so the second one came together, we, we also booked it ourselves. Um, and, but it, it came together really, really nicely. Um, and it was actually one of the, it was a great tour. Um, and I've got to say just for, for so, but at this, at this point in time, um, we were playing with a drummer in South Africa, but we were still touring, um, just as a two piece, just for oh, logistical okay. reasons. Okay. Um, and also the, also at this time, um, of the band, um, Lucy and I, are no longer sort of together as a couple. One of the best, weirdly, one of the best times of, of the band, you know, because we were <laughs> super close and we kind of, um, so, and it was kind of nice, I think, to sh- shed all that pressure of a relationship and just sort of go out there and focus on the music and have fun. And what, so um, you guys didn't Fleetwood Mac yeah, so, the whole thing? So we went back. No, <laughs> no, we didn't. Okay, good. <laughs> um, so then, yeah, then we, this was, two, the second one was 2016 and then, then we came back and we thought, okay, if we really want to, you know, if we really want to continue doing this, we have to actually move there and, uh, wow. and start sort of start again, you know? And then we, we start, just started the process of, uh, finding out from other people who'd, who'd done it before, you know, and, um, what it entails and how, how to go about it. And, and Berlin, we'd been there and loved it. And it is, uh, it's it's quite well known that Berlin is very welcoming to artists. There's actually a there's a visa called you can get an art, even a freelance artist visa, which is just oh, wow. kind of insane. In my you know like I don't think a lot of people have that. So no, I've so never we kind of got that. to work in the yeah. So we kind of got to work on um, on this application. We sort of found these immigration lawyers who we worked with, who were thankfully um, just incredible actually it was just this amazing group of, of women who helped us and they were just fantastic you know it was because it's a very daunting thing you know i don't I know imagine. i don't know anything about Im- immigration law and all this stuff right um yeah so we kind of started the process you know getting all the documents and the reference letters and uh then we had this, uh, we had this new album ready which was the the album called lower and we we sent it off to uh, to Fuzz Club Records in in London because we we just thought it would it just it it sounds so much like it could be on that label but it doesn't sound like anyone on that label anyway we just right. thought it would be such a good fit so we sent it to them 